These are things that most of you out there viewing this program today may take for granted. You, you open the tap and you expect water to be there. If it isn't, you get upset, you call your building management or maybe the uh, waterworks department or the equivalent wherever you are. And the opposite side of the equation, of course, sanitation. Now here's a shocker, okay? I'll bet very few of you out, very few of you out there knew this fact. An estimated 2.6 billion people around the world do not have access to basic sanitation, and that comes down to basic health, obviously, and survival for many in the developing world. So, talk about the haves and the have-nots. The WTO is aiming to change that, and no, I am not talking about the World Trade Organization. I'm talking about something much more salient and basic to the topic at hand. The World Toilet Organization, founded by former real estate developer Jack Sim of Singapore, in 2001. A whole host of events upcoming on the imminent calendar and Jack joins myself and Javelin's Steve Davies out of the Lion City today. Jack, welcome to the program. It's nice seeing you. It's been uh, quite a while. Uh, 2.6 billion people. I'm pretty darn sure that last time we talked it was still about 2.6 billion people who did not have access to basic sanitation. Where, who has failed what and why is it taking so long to do the basics in life? One of the big problems is that they don't talk about toilets and sanitation. And sanitation is bundled together with water. So it's called what sun, water and sanitation. And once you put the two together, everybody talks about water. And then they call sanitation black water, waste water, gray water. And they don't talk about sanitation. And in the process, they learn very little. Who's they? Who's they? Are we talking about this are government, the, the UN, municipalities? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. The government, the UN system, the humanitarian aid organization, the foundations, all the community are talking about water. And <laughs> are they blind or do they just have bad people advising them? I think that there is such a thing called charismatic species. So if you are talking about saving the forest, you save a panda or tiger and you're not saving the deer. So this is uh, the vanity of the world community. You talk about things that are spectacular, but uh, fortunately, uh, World Toilet Organization has been able to break the taboo on toilets by making it a humor, humorous uh, subject, uh, calling ourselves mm -hmm. the WTO. It works very well. I am, I am banking, okay, without knowing the specifics uh, of the uh you know, the, the topic at hand here, as, as well as you do anyway, that it, this is really divided, this is really polarized the society. It really is divided into the haves and have-nots. It's going to be the poor regions of the Indonesian archipelago that have more of a problem with this than Jurong or Woodlands in Singapore. In Hong Kong, we don't even talk about it. We complain that public toilets don't smell as nice or uh, are not as clean as we would like them, but we do have access to basic sanitation, even though the fact that it was until very, very recently in history that we stopped discharging raw sewage into Victoria Harbor is lost on much of the public. The rich don't have a problem with this. Singapore, Hong Kong does not have a problem with this. It's going to be Indonesia, parts of the Philippines, et cetera, et cetera, which just exacerbates the problem, right? Yes, and the solution to this is using the marketplace because if you imagine that 2.5 billion or 2.6 billion people do not have a proper toilet, it means that there are such a big number of customers potentially going to buy something and the poor has always been portrayed as a destitute and mm -hmm. the people in developed country has now to understand that the poor are one of the biggest buyer of handphones, television and there are mm. big stratas of, of poor and the income poor, they should start to buy toilets. Lots of them have television and no toilets. So it's a big marketplace. We calculate that, that if you have divide that by five, you get 500 million household toilets to be sold. And also mm -hmm. the workplace toilet, the school toilets, the religious building toilets is going to be about one billion uh, toilets to be sold. Then wow. after that, you have the soap and supplies. It's about uh -huh. one trillion dollar US dollar marketplace. Wow. There is a big business here somewhere. I don't know the answer to it. But Steve, uh, from Javelin, let me ask you, has this, has what we're, uh, we're talking about with Jack today, has this ever, ever entered into any of your analysis? Do you, have you even thought about this topic before? Um, no, I will be the first to admit that uh, one doesn't. I mean, you, you talk about sort of general levels of infrastructure spending, 
Uh, and when you talk about infrastructure spending, you talk mainly about roads and water systems and telecoms, but you don't talk about the basics such as sanitation. But Jack was telling me a little bit earlier on that in two days' time, it's, uh, it's World Toilet Day. Uh, which uh, I'd be interested to learn a little bit more about what that's going to involve and what events and really what the serious message is that's underpinning all of that. Mm -hmm. Jack, um, it's interesting that the world becomes so fixated on things like getting a computer into every child's hands, no child left behind or whatever, and we want to make $2,000 cars like the Nano in India, and yet has anybody taken up the, has anybody risen to the occasion? Has anybody said, okay, I am going to be the big toilet provider, I'm going to do good, I'm going to provide basic health and sanitation, and I'm going to get rich in the process? Maybe the, maybe the thing keeping them from that is you can make a toilet, you can make a cheap toilet, God knows those exist, but I as a private entrepreneur cannot lay all the pipes. I cannot set up, uh, you know, waste uh, incineration or waste disposal plants. The governments have to do their part. The private sector can't do everything in this case. The fortunate thing is there's lots of technology right now with on-site treatment, so you don't need a sewage pipe. Just like the handphone now don't have a wire attached to it, the sanitation has a standalone ecological sanitation system. And this costs between $30 to $300, and it's quite mm -hmm. affordable by the income poor. And there are a lot of manufacturers on the ground making this, but I think that if we have an IKEA flat pack model that we can mass produce millions and millions of units, we can make toilet very, very sexy because we make them color and we uh -huh. can make it very, very cheap. Flat packs ship all over the world. And you need the emotional appeal of a sexy toilet to drive the poor who wants to buy the toilet because if they are openly mm -hmm. defecating all the time, they don't find that why should I go into a toilet? But once it becomes a lifestyle trend, then you mm -hmm. have a lot of followers. Okay, I never thought of a toilet as sexy, but when I need one and can't find one, I'm, I'm telling you, it's decidedly unsexy. Give me a quick answer here. We're almost out of time. You got 20 seconds, Jack. Uh, bear with me. World Toilet Day happens in two days. What's going to happen? What do you got planned? World Toilet Day started in 2001. This year, we have Unilever as the global sponsor of this day, and we're going out there with all the all media, right. very, very strong coverage. A lot of people are going to talk about it, and talking drives demand. Okay. Jack, it's great talking to you, and congratulations on nailing that sponsorship with Unilever. Steve, back to the drawing board. Toilets for all, an important component in your next annual investment strategy. Steve Davies and Jack Sim are guests on the show. And that'll do it for Asia Confidential. Thanks for joining us. Many years ago, Man Investments began designing financial products that see the market from a different perspective. Since then, it's grown through both the good times and the tough ones. Accessing a broad range of alternative investment solutions around the whole world. With Man Investments, what will you achieve? Man Investments, a world-leading alternative investments provider.